the international report, uh, you know, that, you know, that has mapped Nepal and uh, we are apparently, uh, we are apparently uh, at the moment uh, sitting at a 45, less than $50. Hello and welcome to Nepal Traveller once again. Today, we are with our guest, Mr. Shubhot Thapa, who is a very experienced tourism entrepreneur. He has been uh, in the tourism industry for many years. He is also the founder of Beanstalk Asia Nepal. Beanstalk Asia Nepal last year and once again is looking at organizing the Nepal Hospitality Conclave in association with the Hotel Association of Nepal. It's a major event that brings together the hospitality industry, suppliers, vendors, tourism experts to discuss what needs to be done for the tourism industry and the way ahead. Welcome to Ashur Shubham. Thank you, Baris Terrence. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you. And thank you very much. So Shubod, we are gearing up for the second Nepal Hospitality Conclave. That's right. Would you like to share with us a little bit about the importance, the significance of this? Uh, the Nepal Hospitality Conclave uh, started in 2022, as you mentioned. Uh, that was the first of its kind. Uh, the, uh, the, the vision behind the Hospitality Conclave was to bring together uh, the entire uh, fraternity, the entire industry, uh, you know, under one roof uh, and where we will be able to uh, showcase the strengths you know, and the opportunities of the of the industry uh, and also to be able to uh, share within the knowledge you know that our industry has um, uh, like uh, like the first one in 2022 uh, you know there are three verticals on which the uh, conclave works uh, we call it uh, know more, uh, meet more, and show more. So the know more would be the knowledge sessions. Uh, meet more would be an opportunity to network, not only within our own industry, but also to be able to network with thought leaders, uh, you know, with uh, you know, with stalwarts of the industry from within and also uh, outside of Nepal. And show more would be for our sponsors to showcase their products, their services. Uh, so that is the platform, you know, and that is the vision behind the Nepal Hospitality Conclave. Uh, we have uh, already finalized uh, our dates for uh, this edition. Uh, I'm happy to share that it's uh, going to be on the 27th and the 28th of June. Uh, we've chosen this time because it is kind of, you know, uh, typically the off season for the industry. Uh, it's a time that, you know, people will be able to hopefully, you know, invest two days, you know, right. into, you know, into the coming together uh, as a, you know, uh, you know, as an industry. Uh, it is also an opportune time because, uh, you know, Nepal has announced itself to be the, uh, you know, tourism uh, decade, 2023 until 2032. Uh, and primarily, uh, this time around, I think the focus is going to be what is hospitality uh, what's our industry going to be, you know, doing in the next ten years? Yeah, so that's that's the, that. I think is the thought. I think that's the thought behind the conclave. Yeah, I remember the first Nepal hospitality conclave that uh, we were also part of. Nepal traveler Absolutely. was there uh, as fantastic, the official media. Fantastic participation. Yeah. What is the learning that we've got? It was a huge success, but then uh, how are we going to build on it? And what was some of the learning we got out of that? I think. Uh, Terence, uh, I think one of the one of the major learnings, I think one of the major learnings from from the last time around uh, was this, uh, you know, was this gap, this gap in perception uh, between where we we think we are as an industry uh, and where the industry has actually gone globally. You know, um, there was a, I think there was a white paper that was produced by Han, uh, you know, who is a major partner. I mean this event would not be, you know, it would be 
half complete, you know, without, you know, without the support of Han and also, you know, uh, with the support of uh, Nepal Tourism Board. Uh, because as you know, uh, hospitality uh, is one part of the of entire the service, the entire service uh, offering uh, of Nepal as a destination. So, number one was this gap, you know, between what we think we know and what is actually happening uh, globally. Uh, globally. The second is, again, uh, we're not able to take advantage, you know, we have not been able to take advantage of, of the various opportunities, uh, you know, and, you know, the various uh, possibilities that are, that exists currently, you know, in the tourism and in the hospitality industry space, you know. Um, I mean, there are, for example, partners out, you know, out there, you know, waiting to support the industry, uh, you know, they're, you know, they are encouraging, they're encouraging the industry worldwide, you know, to go greener. I would not say go green, but go greener. You know, there, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of support and there's a lot of knowledge out there in terms of, uh, you know, how sustainable, uh, you know, hotel operations and hospitality operations can be. Uh, what impact, you know, what impact, uh, you know, these initiatives, uh, you know, bring, uh, you know, to the bottom line. In the end, we are, you know, we are in it, you know, it's, it's a business, it's a business. Uh, I mean, there's an international report, uh, you know, that, you know, that has mapped Nepal and uh, we are apparently, uh, we are apparently uh, at the moment uh, sitting at a uh, 45, less than $50, uh, less than $50, uh, you know, average spend per tourist. In the destination, I'm not just talking hotels, but you know, as you know, as as a tourist, whereas you know, in our neighborhood, uh, you know, they are now clocking you know, 150 dollars per day. That's the average spend per tourist. Uh, so you know, how does the hospitality industry, uh, you know, scale up, you know, with yeah, you know, to go towards, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but you know, if I'm able to even, uh, you know, if I'm able to even change the fifty dollars to seventy-five dollars, you know, in the coming couple of years, I'm sure uh, every stakeholder in the travel and tourism industry, hospitality being a part of it, you know, is going to is going to benefit. Is going to benefit. Uh, you know, uh, that is one of the things that we try to bring, that we try to bring, you know, uh, at the conclave. So there are sessions which are going to be focused. You know, are going to be focused on that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, in those areas. Uh, the other, uh, the other major finding, and I think the other major learning from uh, from twenty twenty two, was also uh, you know the fact that uh, we keep talking uh, about a, a policy gap. You know, between uh, you know w w what the government should have done, or you know what the airlines should have done, or you know. Uh, but our focus at the moment is that yes, we are a part of the ecosystem. Uh, but what are we going to do? You know, I mean, until we, until we take, uh, you know, one foot forward, you know, we're going to be just, we're just going to be the same way. running into standstill. Yeah. So this upcoming conclave, what can participants expect? What, what is going to be the great points? What, what, what is the learning that they'll have? What kind of uh, sharing will they have? So, you know, as I was saying, uh, the idea is for, you know, new, new developers, uh, promoters, you know, uh, to come in and understand, you know, you know, the landscape. Yes, they have already invested, but it's never too late to, you know, to, you know, to pick up a few points. Mm -hmm. uh, there's opportunity for them to, you know, to meet peers, fellow investors. There's opportunity for them to meet, uh, you know, uh, institutions that are interested in, you know, in investing. Uh, you know, into green finance, sustainable finances. That's very interesting. Uh, senior management, senior management, uh, you know, of uh, of the business. Not not everybody, not everybody, you know, works with an international brand. We have uh, strong local brands. We have a lot of independently owned and managed hotels. Okay. So management teams, you know, from those uh, hotels are also able to learn from experts. Again, share ideas. Uh, there's also going to be a lot of focus on technology, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, you know, uh, technology in the hospitality business uh, has grown at such a rapid pace, you know, I mean, 
uh, there's a, I mean, literally the paradigm shifts. It's, yeah. It shifts every day, every day, you know. Uh, and this is in a way linked uh, to our human resources. You know, we have a situation where we have uh, thousands of, uh, you know, I mean, when I went to hotel school, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, you'd have to really, you know, you'd have to run around looking for a, a professional, you know, educational institution where, you know, where one would find uh, human resources. Uh, I now believe that there are more than 65 uh, professional, uh, you know, hotel schools which are offering uh, undergraduate yeah. studies. But where are these kids? They're all abroad. Where are these kids? Right. So you've got a you've got a human resource constraint. Uh, I can't stop uh, I can't stop a young person from leaving because you know everybody has a right to pursue his or her career. But that puts a constraint on my business. And one way to mitigate that constraint is to adopt technology. Right? And I think that's what has happened worldwide. I mean, if you look at, if you look at, you know, the WTO or the W, you know, WTTC uh, reports post COVID, uh, it's amazing that people have just not come back to the industry. You know, people who are in the business, in the services yeah. industry, post COVID, they just didn't come back. So, you know, the hotel business and the hotel industry, the hospitality industry, airlines and travel, Everywhere. you know, uh, you know, they're just moving rapidly towards technology. We are way behind. We are way, way behind. You also uh, have the business of uh, helping hotels with digitalizing their reservations, their marketing. Uh, you, you are involved in that. Yes. Would you like to share something that sure. the hospitality industry in Nepal needs to take that step? Sure. We, uh, and I think, uh, uh, I think currently, currently, what I would say is that uh, you know it's it's a it's a chicken or egg situation. You know, uh, you know we have we have studied the market, and what's happening right now with uh, with technology or the adoption of uh, soft technologies by the industry is that oh 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 so you are. Um, uh, oh, you are getting online bookings? Uh, okay. I also want to get online bookings. Uh, who do I go to? Oh, do you have a website? Uh, okay. Uh, I also want a Absolutely. website. Right. Uh, so do you have software in the hotel? Yes. Okay. Uh, I also want a software. But the idea is to understand the entire process. Uh, so you have technology uh, which helps you uh, with your day-to-day -day operations and with management, thereby reducing load on the already non-existing HR. And then you have technologies that help you engage with a with a client, and also then help you upselling, and it helps you in you know increasing revenues. That's the entire idea. That's the goal, right? So if you are able to, uh, if we are able to take a hotel or a, you know if we're able to take uh, a developer through that process, uh, and if they are able to understand that hey, there is a merit, there is an ROI. There is an ROI, you know, and that's what we do. We do it through a company called Booking Biz. Uh, that's that's how we work people with, you know, client relationships, uh, with loyalty, uh, you know, by, you know, increasing revenues. And I think uh, we are going to be using digital, uh, you know, we are going to have sessions on digital uh, marketing and also on, uh, you know, on these technologies at the, you know, at, at the conclave. And we will have experts uh, in the case of social media, in the case of digital marketing. We actually have a Google certified trainer who will be there. So people are able to understand what, you know, what Google is doing for you. Uh, you know, we are able to understand, you know, we are able to understand how the communication should flow for it to make sense. Uh, having a website uh, may, may just not be enough. Yeah. True. Yeah. Also, Shubud, looking at uh, the destination yeah. and the number of hospitality, hotel years that are in Nepal, sure. do you think that we are actually far behind the curve in terms of digital marketing? In fact, we are probably behind even in marketing. Sure. And that's an area where perhaps a conclave like this can bring in the industry leaders, bring in the hotel association and sure. and push for more marketing, more digital marketing. I mean, it, will that also be achieved in the conclave? Or oh, realized sure. at least. Sure. Uh, I, I I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a major, I think it's going to be a major, I think it's going to be a, a you know, a, a major topic of discussion. It's going to be a major topic of discussion. I already mentioned, you know, I already mentioned that you know you've got uh, Google certified uh, you know uh, experts 
who will who will actually take us through the process. You know, uh, you know, you need to you know you need to learn A before you go to B and C. Uh, I, mean, I take your example. I mean, I take NepalTraveler.com. I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 85% of your focus is you know is online, right? Yeah. It's online. Uh, I know that you know I know that you know you're also in print. You know, you know, there's we have an in-flight magazine. You know, an in-flight magazine that has a special niche, but uh, but if you were to look, if you were to look at, if you were to look at information on Nepal as a destination, you know, uh, as an outsider, you know, if I wanted to go, you know, if I wanted to visit, I don't know, Barbados, right? I wouldn't have to look too far. Barbados mm -hmm. has got its ducks in a row, and it's got information organized for me. And once I have seen that basic information, then I have the choice. Do exactly. I want to spend, you know, seventy-five dollars, you know, a night living in a, you know, in a shack, you know, or do I spend seven fifty dollars and, you know, stay at a, at an exclusive luxury villa, you know, you know, overlooking, mm -hmm. you know, overlooking the ocean? Um, so I think that is something that uh, I think that is something that we will I think that is something that we will definitely be addressing. Uh, it was also taken up. It was taken. It was taken up last time, and there were a few issues that came up. And I think we're going to be we're going to be delving on those Taking topics. We're going to be delving on those topics this time around. Yes. Okay. Beyond the conclave, you've been in the industry. You've been at the forefront of the industry in various capacities, mainly in the hospitality. How do you see the situation of Nepal's hospitality industry? Because there's so many players suddenly in. Post-COVID, right. you have the international chains, you have the sure. big brands, sure. and uh, some people are positive. We're hopeful that optimistic that yeah, the investing means there's a future. Sure. Uh, but what is your take on this? <laughs> I think we could discuss it. Maybe we could break, you know, break into it into two parts. And I will, uh, I'll try and I'll you know I'll try and maybe you know give you my take on international brands. You know. Having worked with international brands myself, uh, I see that as a huge bonus uh, to the industry. Whether it's in terms of uh, operational excellence, that's what I'd like to call it. So, you know, I mean, you're working with a partner, you know, the international brand, the chain, uh, you know, is, is a partner, is a partner, you know, in, in your success lies their success and in their success in yours. lies yours. Uh, so if you're able to leverage that partnership, you know, and if I came, you know, if I came to you to learn, uh, it is because you have a certain skill set that I don't. So as a local hotelier, if I were to sign up, or if I were to partner with an international brand, and the brand could be any any brand that you know maybe that fits your uh, corporate vision, or maybe that fits the market, that fits the you know. The rate categories the that, that you're looking you at, uh, it could be. Uh, number two, uh, if a brand comes in uh, into the into the destination, uh, whether they like it or not, for their own success, there is an automatic, uh, you know, there is a an automatic promotion of the destination. True. Uh, there's also uh, a validation of the destination. You know, if there's a brand. In Nepal, uh, an international, an international client of the brand traveler has the confidence. Would say, "Hey, listen, I, know, I stay you know, with this brand in the U.S. or in in Malaysia or in Singapore, and they are now in Nepal. All right. So I think, therefore, uh, you know, Nepal must be, per, in my mind, uh, the perception. Oh, they must be at this level. You know." Uh, there aren't uh, cows and elephants on the streets uh, anymore. I'm, I'm being a bit rude, but I think you know there is still that perception, uh, in, you know, internationally that we are still, you know, yeah, Some yeah. backward, right? <laughs> That's one. And I think the second, uh, the second part, the second part would be with, uh, you know, the second part would be that uh, the industry has our industry has always been uh, privately led, yeah. right? Uh, you know. We are now, you know, we are now maybe a little, little over seventy years in the business. Uh, we have always been privately led, uh, and as a private, uh, as a private uh, entrepreneur, as a business, you know, I have money, you know, I have a plan, I have a vision, I'll invest it. You know, 
nobody's got, nobody should stop me, right? So there is, where is, there is that feeling. So what's happened is that we've got this huge spread, you know, uh, where, where, where we discussed earlier that we have therefore become a, a less than a $50, uh, you know, uh, destination you know, per day, right? So if you are able to scale up our services, so if the industry is able to scale up its services, but that's one part of the, you of know, the big of the picture, picture, you know, then I think the idea would be then to sort of say, hey, listen, okay, we have our, uh, you know, we have our tourist hub, we have our tunnels, you know, we have, you know, vibrant, you know, nightlife, but at the same time, we also have the high end. Yeah, we also have a high end. Uh, but the idea, the challenge is to actually service that high end and to position, position, you know, ourselves as that high end, top end, uh, whether you want to call it nice destination, whether you would like to call it a, you know, a, you know, a luxury uh, destination, whether you'd like to call it a destination for just for a retreat, you know, it could be a pilgrimage, you know, it could be just pure spiritual. Uh, I think yoga is a good example. You know, there are, you know, there are, uh, you know, there are experts who are, uh, you know, running uh, programs, uh, you know, for 14, 15, uh, you know, co- you know, fortnights where, you know, they are looking for higher destinations. Uh, I think, uh, I think we have beaten the, the wedding destination uh, too much, right? There are, and the adventure, <laughs> All right, You know, there are again policy, I guess there are policy issues, policy challenges that, you know, you know, you know that, that, that's, that need to be overcome. For Nepal to become, you know, uh, not really? we are an excellent destination. There's no doubt. About, there's no doubt about that. You know, you know. But what I'm trying to say is that just having, you know, having a couple, uh, you know, having a couple standing at the Everest base camp uh, in Nepali clothes it's uh, not is is not go, it's not going to cut it. You know, it's nice. It's it's nice to it's good. You know, it's a, wow. You know, brilliant. But that's it. But where is the capitalization on that? You know, on that on that brand. Uh, but again, I think at the conclave, hopefully, uh, you know, we are going to, we are, I think we are going to, at least, at least, you know, the idea is to start a discussion. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that, uh, you know, s- you know, some solution or some way forward, uh, you know, will come out. How optimistic are you about the government, the uh, authorities in charge who can make these policy changes? How optimistic are you that they will actually be at that conclave? And take it positively because I think all the points we've talked about, the private sector is doing a great job. They've always led, they've always taken the risk. Sure. The problem is the bottleneck starts at the airport because we don't have the infrastructure. Sure. The bottleneck starts with the roads. Sure. So, I mean, it'll be nice if the government at least participates and feels the need. Well, uh, excellent, you know, excellent thought. Uh, one of the prime, one of the prime uh, objectives of the conclave is to bring all the stakeholders, stakeholders. together and uh, you know and the government perhaps is you know the government rep- represents all of us right so they may be you know they are you know they are i think uh, one of the most uh, you know crucial stakeholders in this whole thing uh, and yes we do intend we do intend to bring them on board uh, at the 2022 at the 2022 conclave we had a session on policy constraint, exactly. which I think, you know, yes. which you also monitored. And I think it was fantastic. We had great participation from the government. Uh, I believe that some work has, again, gone forward, you know, with Nepal Tourism Board and Han, you know, uh, you know, right. yes, you know, on there is there is there's been good movement on the standardization of the hotel product. Yep. We will be revisiting that at this, uh, you know, uh, okay. you know, at the conclave this time. Uh, and the idea is, as we mentioned earlier, you know, whether it's a mice destination or whether Nepal, you know, what am I going to do about Nepal as a as a wedding destination? Uh, where are the where are the policy? Where are the bottlenecks? I think where are the bottlenecks? Uh, what should the industry do as a whole? You know, uh, you know, you know, to move beyond those. Uh, and I think the industry also needs to take some steps. I'm not saying that we have not. You know, but the idea is to you know to say, hey, okay, you know. Let's all get together, you know, I mean, uh, it hurts everybody, it hurts everybody uh, and it benefits everybody. There you, are, you know, again, you know, yeah. the idea is to move, move away from a $50 per day destination to, to anything beyond. Even if I can move, you know, I as an industry, 
As in, cool. even if I can move the fifty dollars to fifty five, <laughs> you know, that, that's a step forward. No, I think we we all appreciate the steps you've taken for the conclave and the continuity. It's coming back this year, and I think we need to keep doing this because at least we are moving a little ahead, and that's important that we don't stagnate. Yeah. Uh, talking about the government's decade tourism promotion, the next decade. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, and uh, what do you see we, that we could be doing? <laughs> I think I think my information on this is is, is as much as yours, uh, but I think at least at the con at the conclave, at the conclave, um, uh, we have a session on this, and uh, if nothing, we could actually come out with you know we could actually come out with a you know with a way forward. Exactly. On behalf of the industry, uh, you know, uh, excellent. You know, we've got uh, we've got good news. I think the last couple of weeks have been all good news. You know, the prime minister was in Pokhara, and you know, and uh, you know, he declared Pokhara to be our tourism capital. Uh, I think two days ago, uh, you know, uh, the government has declared Tamil and Darbar Gwad to be open twenty four hours. hours. So I think these are all the right steps for the destination to become more vibrant. Uh, but in terms of the next ten years, and you know, ten years is not a long time. It goes by, you know, it goes by pretty quickly. So perhaps uh, even before the uh, before the conclave uh, and during the conclave, uh, the idea of the session is to to spend time on it and you know to get everybody, get all the stakeholders, you know, get their views and visions on this, and hopefully we can then present it, you know, uh, you know, to Han and to you know and to Nepal Tourism Board and say, you know, this is what the industry feels. You know, uh, you know. Let's go forward. Uh, one other thing I think that is going to be very, very interesting for the decade ahead uh, is you know the growth of uh, the business, uh, the growth of the business uh, outside, uh, you know, outside the three our triangle. You know, yes. the Pokhara, yes. Chitwan, and Kathmandu. There's a tremendous amount of growth in the business uh, regionally, especially with the provinces now. Absolutely, regional, right? Uh, I think that is one area. That is, I think, one area. Our regional, uh, you know, our regional hotel stakeholders. I think they are the ones. I think who will be able to benefit uh, from this in a really, really big way. In a really big way, you know. Uh, uh, why reinvent the wheel? You know, they could easily, you know, they could easily mm -hmm. interact here, uh, learn from others' pains again, and also, you know, gain from others' uh, successes because the investment uh, outside. This our triangle is huge. It's a tremendous amount of development, and I think that and that I think is very very positive. That's true. Yeah. So as a final question, what are your hopes for Nepal in the days ahead? I mean, you're more from the hospitality, but the airlines, the uh, the custom, uh, the the immigration, everything has to come together. For the destination really to move ahead, the marketing, the, the, the tourism board, which is still lacking a CEO, uh, what, are, what is your honest opinion on where we are heading and how do we get there? To my mind, uh, tourism, uh, and when I say tourism, I say hospitality and the entire services, the tourism industry uh, as a whole, uh, for us, it's, it's still a livelihood industry. It's just a livelihood. Uh, it needs to move from being a livelihood industry yeah, uh, to a revenue generating industry and i think i think when i think when that uh, i think when that sinks in or i think when uh, as a, you know as a country you know as a country if we are able to take that uh, into our policy uh, into our into our thought process, not even policy making, you know. If you start thinking of this, if you move away from this, you know, I'm drinking water because uh, I need water to survive, you know. That's a livelihood. But I need to move away from it being a livelihood industry yeah, to, to becoming a lifestyle industry, right? So I think one, once we move as a country, I think once we move, that once that paradigm shift happens, I think that's when uh, you know the immigration, the customs, and you know uh, the airlines, and uh, you know the one-star and the five-star hotels. I think that 
I think that's going to change. I mean, if you look at look look at the neighborhood, uh, and I you know I mean, look at look at Malaysia, look at Indonesia, look at Thailand, they've all moved away, and you know, they've put tourism not as a livelihood industry. It's become a lifestyle economy. industry. It's an it's an economic big time economic activity, and in that process, uh, you know, I need to play my part. You need to play yeah, your part. Yeah. The government needs to play its part, and I think all the stakeholders need to play its part. Something that I think we will also be taking it up, you know, in the regional hotels and resorts, uh, you know, part of the session. Uh, you know, it, it's a thought. It's a thought. You know, we've got uh, we've invited uh, several uh, international, you know, international partners who will be at the session talking yeah. about you know international success stories. You know, how do we move? How do we move? You know, how do we move the dial, basically? Exactly. So I think that's you know so that's the you know that's the plan so thank you so much for sharing with us about the, yeah, it's the a pleasure to be here with you. Live and for doing these kind of events because i think they need to be done more frequently at least they bring everybody together to sure. discuss sure. to see how we should move ahead sure. and then slowly i guess we'll move ahead thank you so much Subert, for taking the time thank you very much it's a pleasure